What's up guys, the cleanest runs I've had in this GM have been double Wellock with an Ursa Titan. This setup makes tank room and the boss encounter less of a monumental task, and if you take turns with these supers, you'll always have something available when you need it. For weapon loadouts, the recent buffs to Arbalest make it incredibly strong in this Nightfall. Having a couple people running Arbalest will make very quick work of potentially the most challenging part of this run, the Barrier Champions. Pair that with your choice of linear fusion rifle, and I'd go with a Pulse or a Scout Rifle for your energy slot. I definitely recommend having something with medium to long range, as most of the engagements here are going to be at a distance. A side note on Arbalest, weapons with intrinsic champion effects are not affected by Season Artifact Champion mods. This means that even though you're running Unstoppable Fusion Rifles, Arbalest will not stun Unstoppables. I ran Vex with this setup for two reasons. The first is Particle Deconstruction. If you open up a fight with a champion by building those five stacks with Vex, it will maximize the efficiency of the Arbalests by having them do 40% extra damage with every round instead of building up to it. Champions will die faster, ammo will be saved. The second reason is so that the whole team isn't entirely reliant on heavy ammo to stun Unstoppables with the added benefit that, by the time an Unstoppable is stunned, it's again already taking that 40% extra damage. I went with an auto rifle for my primary in case my teammates weren't ready for a barrier to go up, just to stagger their health regen long enough for an arbalest to come through. But if you have teammates you trust, I think a blinding grenade launcher would be the ideal pick. Don't forget ammo finders on your helmet and fusion rifle scavenger on your legs, as well as protective light with charge with light mods. I ran shield break charge, taking charge, and elemental charge. If you can find a way to fit quick charge in on arc armor, it goes really well with Vex. I'd strongly recommend double concussive dampener on your chest since most of the things in here that will annihilate you are going to be AoE damage. Try to have 60 resilience for the snipers, but I wouldn't call it necessary as there's only a small handful of them and they're generally first priority. Right into the run, you're going to immediately opt out of dealing with both arc shields in the entire nightfall by taking a left around this initial war zone. You are able to take your sparrow all the way up this cliff if you'd like, but do keep in mind that if you park it too close to the action and it blows up next to you, it will kill you. Your first target back here is a turret on top of the rocks. There's four more, two on top of these crates and one far far left on the other side of these rocks, and one on ground level. Once you clear some Cabal out, drop pods will bring in champions. The biggest threat by far is the barrier. Make that top priority. One of the Unstoppables will join the fight that you skipped in the beginning. It's a pretty free kill. Reminder that the amount of champions you kill affects your drops at the end. Also worth noting is that all Cabal have a weak point on their back. For these champions, that's the tank or the thrusters. After the champions and powerful mobs, the miniboss is going to emerge with a squad from the main entrance of the land tank. This miniboss can delete you in a fraction of a second when the minigun comes out. Stay out of line of sight as best you can. At half health, the miniboss will go off to the side and put up a shield with a generator in the middle of it. At which point, mobs will flood out of the door next to your flanking spot. The easiest way to deal with the shield is to have one of the arbalests rotate to the front while the others run distraction. Alternatively, you can line up the generator in the center to eat the shots from the minigun. Don't forget to pick up ammo on your way in. The Cabal in this room will rush you the moment you step in, unless you kill them before they can. Be paying attention when you get to the top of this elevator. Enemies are going to spawn below in the tank room and you only need to take one of them out to queue the next wave, leaving two of the three interceptors as free kills before you even enter the room.
coordinate with your team what's going to happen when you drop down. I prefer to take a hard left and immediately get behind cover. There's going to be sniper platforms top mid on the left and right. Once they're down, the two barrier champions and the minibus are your next targets. With both this part and with the second wave, do your best not to let any mobs have free roam on the back line. You'll quickly be dancing around so many grenades that you're forced into an exposed position. Also try to be active about keeping an eye on every angle. Warhounds in groups of three will come out of doorways a little past the sniper platforms on both sides. I've yet to see the Interceptor take shots at this range, he just chills in the back until you're ready to deal with him. You'll often hear the Warhounds before you see them. Leave something with an objective marker on it alive long enough to run in for ammo. It's the only chance you'll have, and you very much want to have the option to melt the tanks. Be in position when the last marker goes down, and be ready to melt a tank before an overly aggressive barrier champion attempts to assert their dominance. The thrusters are the weak spot. The tank isn't a confirmed kill until you see it start to explode. If you get rushed this hard, the play is to animation lock the champion by doing enough damage to force the barrier. A little communication can go a long way. If you're aware of what sightline the tank is firing on, try to let your team know. The explosion is pretty large and it can one-shot you through well if you're close enough to the impact. Tank is firing on the left. Firing on the right. Firing in mid. Let's focus tank when possible. After the second barrier champion, clean up the rest of the room, do a sweep for ammo, and proceed. Once you make it past an unstoppable, a miniboss, a sniper, and a few cabal, you'll be in the power core section. If the miniboss tries to hide, you can flush them out with a grenade. Once someone grabs the power core, the door forward will open. The mobs will hide out of sight unless there's someone they can reach, so have one person on their platform to draw them out. In this next room, there's going to be two turrets on ledges to the left and a barrier champion with friends on the right. By then, the power core will have reset. Have someone grab it and run it to the console to open the way forward. Approach with caution as there are several turrets in this room, in addition to a sniper on the platform above you. Save the miniboss for last, killing it will bring another wave back in the main room behind you. Just like with the first room, they'll all hide unless they can reach someone. After round two of Barrier and Friends, run the second power core to open a door to the elevator that takes you to the boss.
you'll have another barrier champion with an unstoppable, among other things. Feel free to use supers here since you'll get them back when you start the boss encounter, though save a well if possible. What you're saving a well for is to drop it before the boss starts and you get your super right back, so you'll have one on the ground and two to work with. The boss will release homing fireballs on entrance, proceed to set up shop in a corner past the furnace for the first third of the fight. Very shortly into the fight, a group of red bars are going to jump down on both sides. It's best to cross through the furnace and clear them out now so they can't be a problem later. And while we're on the topic, the furnace will burn you if you step on it when it's lit, though there is a safe spot where you won't get burned against the wall in the center. It's also a good strategy to divide the boss's attention from time to time so whichever side isn't under fire has free reign. I definitely recommend being a little greedy with your heavy ammo here. Once you're through a third of the boss's health, you're going to be challenged by an unstoppable on both sides. They close in quick and need to die fast. Having a super ready for this will save lives. Every 30% there's going to be a shield phase. The safest place to wait for the fireballs to run out. There will be 13 sets of them. Don't forget about the other unstoppable. Obscure as much line of sight as you can both so the fireballs won't make it to you and the boss can't shoot you. It's helpful to stay in a rift or well so you still have overshield just in case. When the fireballs stop, approach from different sides to minimize your risk of accidental casualties. Engaging gameplay. Then just like in the beginning, have someone run distraction while the rest of the team takes down the generator inside the bubble. If a teammate goes down, someone distracts while the other rotates for the res. If you're last alive, don't panic. You can rotate back and through the furnace, then slowly make your way across the map. You can maneuver around the barricades until you're past the boss's line of sight and then sneak entirely past the bubble. Just don't make any sound. No shooting, no sprinting, no jumping. Calmly stroll on by. Once the shield goes down, it's time to go. Regroup back at the corner. Hey, how you doing? High five. Again, don't panic. Reminder that on well you can charge your grenade to make it heal instead. Do your best to stay aware of where the boss is and what they're doing. I stopped in the center here when I heard the fireballs to avoid potentially walking into one on the other side. If you're in this situation, the boss needs to be elsewhere before that res is safe. Rotate and draw aggro.
Once the ads are clear, continue to damage the boss. There's another shield at 30%, but this time the shield is going to be on the platform above the furnace. Your safest bet is to make a mad dash back to the entrance on the other side of the room. Just don't die in the process. The fireballs can't reach you over there, and it gives you a lot of extra space to work with on the unstoppables that are also coming, by the way. Have a well ready for this so the boss doesn't kill you instead, and do your best to continue to be aware of what the boss is doing while all this is happening. Always be in motion, and in encounters like these, try to factor into your movement where you expect the damage to be coming from. Once the unstoppables are down, stay out of line of sight until the fireballs are done. And dance party! Then make your way back over, place some red light green light to avoid an early grave, and have someone run distraction on one side while the rest of the team flanks the generator. Imagine if the Juggernaut had Nightcrawler's abilities. Look at this guy. Once the shield goes down, be ready for a round of fireballs. Also, be ready to regroup in a well and take out the adds. That part needs to happen pretty instantly after the shield goes down. The range of movement of the boss seems to cover more of the map every phase. Be prepared to rotate back through at any moment in this final phase. Continuing to be constantly aware of what the boss is doing here is going to be key. Utilize the third person perspective that comes with your rift animation to check around corners. Again, everything's fine, don't panic. It's not like you're going through a literal oven to escape an enemy that can one-shot you, just relax. Now, if all goes according to plan, drop a well and unload all that heavy ammo you've been hanging on to. That is Grandmaster Proving Grounds. Thanks for watching, good luck in there, and subscribe for more Destiny 2 content.